make things interesting or even more interesting. But Bob Lazari will join us to talk about the world of sports. First, Tony D'Angelo, who has uh, caught Connecticut by storm. Uh, we'll chat with him at 7.05. Bruce Flax comes in here. Liz Karanowitz, political strategist. A little later on, entrepreneur Mike Bassetto will share some time with me in the studio. Then there's a special event uh, for uh, Alzheimer's. Uh, coming up, and uh, we'll chat about that towards the very, very end of the broadcast. A couple things I thought were interesting to start off. Some conundrums dropped into my email box and got me thinking yesterday. America is capitalist, greedy. We're greedy, right, in this country. That's what the progressive left or socialism Folks who are in favor of that want you to believe, right? We're greedy. Greed. That whole, you know, Wall Street, Gordon Gecko, greed is good. Well, that would be anti everything that uh, progressive slash socialists believe in. Greed is not good. Well, greed, of course, is good if you're a capitalist, yet they hate for some reason. They seem to hate the idea of greed, yet half of the population is subsidized. Well, how would you get your subsidies if it weren't for the folks who are actually making money? If it weren't for the greedy. And half of the population is actually subsidized. And those half think that they're victims. Imagine me taking money out of my pocket and giving it to you, right? I'll take a 20 out, hand it to you. Here you go. And somehow you're a victim. Somehow you haven't been given a fair shot. I work, right? I work all day. Put in a, another like a 14 hour day yesterday. And I work and you take a little piece of my money yet I'll go drive down any city in Connecticut and I'll see people sitting around on a stoop 12 o'clock in the afternoon, drinking out of a paper bag or just hanging out. And somehow they're victims. I've wronged them in some way. So half the population is subsidized, yet half the population feels like they're victims. And they're victims, yet their rep representatives run the government. It's the folks in those inner cities who are putting the same old, same old folks in office. And they're the, run, they're the ones running things. Like Republicans in their own mindset, they're not running things in Connecticut. And Connecticut is consistently last when it comes to, to business standards in the entire state. So you got victims who elect representatives who run the government for the victims who keep getting poorer. Why is that? And the poor keep getting poorer, yet they have things that people in other countries only dream about. Right, the, the poorest here would still be considered wealthy in other countries. So think about that for a second. So folks work, and they are in, embarked on a, a capitalist mindset, and they're considered greedy, and People point fingers at them. And then other folks are subsidized by those greedy folks. And they're considered victims and they're angry, yet they vote. And they vote in politicians who perpetrate and per per perpetuate the same old song and dance, for lack of a better term. And the poor keep getting poor. Yet the, those poor are still well better off than folks in, let's say, socialist types of countries or communist countries. You know, you think about what we have in this country, and we're still, we're still light years ahead of everybody else. I mean, America, 21st century America, is still the greatest country in the world. I mean, you can argue it. We can have that argument and go round and round. But it's the truth. Just go travel outside the borders of the continental United States, and you'll find that out to be very, very, you know, I'll find that out quickly. That these other countries are, I mean, just shadows of what we are. And they're always, it's a wannabe. 
Again, I, as I said yesterday, people don't, don't strive to go to El Salvador or Nicaragua. They don't even strive to go to you know, a more moderate country, a European country. I mean, they might if it's easier to get there if they're leaving some impoverished place in Africa because it's easier to get to Europe than it would be here. But if you got, you know, you got a chance to go somewhere, you're not, you're not going to some place that's set up a socialistic type of a government. It's not happening. You know, it's funny too. It seems like they're always you know, people are always calling for reductions in military spending, or let's put the kibosh on police spending. Or who knows, Social Security might go bankrupt in X amount of years. So everybody's always worried about that. Nobody's ever worried about the end of food stamps or welfare. Those subsidies aren't going anywhere. When's the last time there was a drastic cut in education? I mean, there shouldn't be, but when was the last time that happened? Doesn't. It's the hypocrisy that we live under, this umbrella of hypocrisy. People don't understand really how good that they have it here in this uh, this great country. Until everything is gone, then they'll know, right? And now we're fighting this fight, this ultra-partisan fight, left versus right. Technically, it's right versus wrong. That's the best way to put it. I just make a T-shirt. Left versus right equals right versus wrong. Oh, that's a good one. Mark that down. I, I'm, I'm trademarking that. That's mine. Right? That's... That's what we're battling every single day. That's why we're fighting. That's why, you know, there are so many people angry as they watch this, this story unfold about former President Donald Trump. I mean, now he wants the FBI to release the affidavit on the raid. The FBI doesn't want to do it. Because the FBI, the D Department of Justice, I think what we're going to find has got themselves in a, uh, in a box, right? You're, and they're in a box. And they, they, they know it. They messed up. Trump actually said there is no way to justify the unannounced raid of Mar-a-Lago, the home of the 45th president of the United States. He went on a tweet spree, I guess, yesterday. In the interest of transparency, he wants, he wants it all to be released. The, the affidavit to be released. It was the breaking of his home. I don't blame him. And the DOJ doesn't want him to do it because they know they screwed this thing up. Right? This is what's going on. I mean, it's becoming really crystal clear that this was a monstrous bungle by the Department of Justice. Right? And apparently Breitbart is reporting Trump's uh, team dropped an email proving the FBI wrongly seized passports and the DOJ is misleading the public with a spin. As I said to, the, to you in the beginning of this, I, I, I've, always, I've always taken this stance when it comes to politicians because I, I have no hero, hero worship whatsoever of any human being. It's just not in my DNA, right? There's nobody to me that is without scrutiny or that I don't look at first with a furrowed brow and try to make out, you know, what's, what's wrong with that person before I try to figure out what's right with them. I mean, again, that's the, the glass is half empty part of me. I'm a cynic by nature. You know, everybody, to every human being seems to be out for themselves first and then let the rest be damned. And if it ends up actually shaking out where some people are helped, they're okay with it. If not necessarily, they don't care. I'm not saying that's all people, but that's how I start when I sort of get to know somebody or even further on down the line. In the case of Donald Trump, as I've said to you in the beginning, and this goes for all politicians, if they've done something wrong, they should be punished. Like any other citizen in the United States, if you break the rules and break the law, you should be punished. Now, I understand that there's a, a circling of the wagons in a big way with Donald Trump. I understand that there are legions of his followers and fans who don't believe anything that anybody says negative about him, and I, I totally get it. That's been something that's been created by this monster of a media. And to a certain extent, the Legion of Trump fans are justified 
in feeling that way. Because for four years, for four years, outlets like CNN, MSNBC, the New York Times, all of these other outlets, the Day Paper, Hartford Current for that matter, never printed one positive story about him. Not one. It was always with a negative angle. Okay, you don't like the guy, I get it. But that makes the rest of the people who do like him, well, now they look at everything with a, a furrowed brow. They're like, well, that's BS. The Department of Justice, it's total bogus stuff. And I don't believe what they've done. And, I, and they're not going to believe what they find, right? That's the other part of this. Even if they find a dead body. You know, if there was a dead body in that big safe that they cracked. You know, or nuclear materials or codes or whatever. Even if there was, people wouldn't believe it because they don't believe anything that's been spewed from the media for the last five and a half years. And I, I, again, the cynic in me doesn't blame them for that. That's why the January 6th hearings have to be taken in the light of, well, it's, it's somebody with a, an axe to grind on somebody else. And take out of it what you want to take out of it. There probably is more truth that you're watching on January 6th and fiction that's being reported. But still, the Legion of Trump fans have circled the wagons because the media has done a bad, a bad job of this from the beginning. They have let the people down. So, anyway. That's how we begin on this beautiful Tuesday morning, broadcasting once again right here on the uh, tremendous Full Power Radio Network. That's all these radio stations across the entire state of Connecticut. So if you're waking up and you're, you know, you're waiting for a different voice, you get mine. You can go online and find out more about me, LeeLC.com. Check that out. It's, a, it's still a work in progress. It's funny. I was, every time I sit down, you know, this is, a, this is some personal stuff. Every time I sit down to try to, to better myself or my situation, it's like, Either it's above my pay grade technology-wise or it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Anyway, that's completely something completely different. It doesn't matter. That's how we begin. All right, so we'll come back in just a couple seconds. i got a couple other stories that uh, I want to share with you. One about teachers and a union and uh, happening in Minneapolis. This story you're not going to believe. I'll share that with you when we come back. Stick around. You're listening again to the Connecticut Radio Full Power Network. <laughs> 